We are presenting a case of transcatheter aortic valve replacement for native aortic valve stenosis with intentional aortic lymphoid laceration and salvage percutaneous coronary intervention. Our patient is an 85 year old female with six months of exertional shortness of breath. She has coronary artery disease status post an intervention on her right coronary artery in 2013 and breast cancer status post left lumpectomy and radiation therapy in 2010. She appears frail and has an ejection systolic murmur over the upper sternal area, no peripheral edema, and her 5-meter walk test was 8 seconds. Her lab showed creatinine of 0.82 and hemoglobin of 9.3 with no more platelet count. Her EKG showed normal sinus rhythm with normal QRS and PR intervals, and her X-ray was clear from congestion or pleurofusions. Her echocardiogram showed normal left ventricular ejection fraction or normal right ventricular function. She had moderate mitral regurgitation. Her aortic valve had three leaflets which were moderately calcified. She had severe aortic stenosis with a mean gradient of 33, peak velocity of 3.8, aortic valve area of 0.7, and dimensionless index of 0.23. Additionally, her awarding valve had moderate regurgitation by quantitative analysis. Coronary angiography showed no new obstructive coronary artery disease and confirmed a patent stent in her osteal RCA. Right heart catheterization showed severe pulmonary hypertension with reduced cardiac index. Cardiac CT showed an annular area of 354 and a perimeter of 67. Her sinuses were narrow with a left sinus of 24 millimeters, right sinus of 22, and a non-coronary sinus of 25 millimeters. Her left main coronary height was 9 millimeters and her right coronary height was 10 millimeters. The distance from a 23 mm virtual valve to the left main coronary artery osteum was 2.1 mm. She had no tortuosity in her iliac vessels or aorta, and the dimensions of her vessels were suitable for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. In summary, the patient was of old age, fairly appearing, and had severe pulmonary hypertension. Her calculated STS score for isolated AVR was 5%. She had high-risk features for acute coronary occlusion, including coronary height of less than 11 mm, a sinus width of less than 30 mm, and a valve to coronary osteum distance of less than 4 mm. After valve team discussion with the patient, decision was made to proceed with transfemoral TAVR with cardiopulmonary bypass on standby, Coronary protection with sequential right and left native already valve leaflets laceration, followed by a sapient 3 23 mm valve deployment and possible salvage percutaneous coronary intervention. Cerebral protection with sentinel device and closure with percles. This is a list of the equipment we're going to be using during the procedure. Procedural steps. Patient was in supine position, intubated, and procedure was done under fluoroscopic and transesophageal echocardiogram guidance. Stair preparation for the anterior chest wall, bilateral groin areas, and right wrist was completed. Intravenous antibiotics were given. Antiplatelet strategy during salvage core intervention was going to be intravenous cangular. Bilateral common femoral arterial axis was secured using two five French sheaths. Two perclose devices were deployed in each vessel in preparation for large bore axis. 14 French Edwards E sheath was advanced over our supra core wire into right common femoral artery. 14 French dry seal sheath was advanced over supra core into the left common femoral artery. Eight French sheath was inserted into the left common femoral vein through which a transvenous pacemaker was advanced into the right ventricular apex in preparation for rapid pacing during valve deployment. 
right radial arterial axis was secured using a six French sheath. Intravenous heparin was given to maintain an ACT more than 250 seconds. And the central cerebral protection device was deployed with the proximal filter into the right innominate artery and the distal filter into the left common carotid artery. A vortic root angiogram was done to determine the ideal projection for valve deployment. After crossing the valve, we deliver a six French multipurpose guide over a V18 support wire which is positioned in the left ventricular cavity. Using the guide, we position a 20 mm gooseneck snare in the left ventricular outflow track. We then placed an astato XS20 300 cm wire into a piggyback catheter followed by shaving of the isolation coating at the back end of the astato wire and fixing the astato wire to a Cori pencil using a hemostat. We then went up with an 8 French multipurpose guide and positioned it over the right aortic valve leaflet. Using this guide, we delivered the Stato XS20 wire, which was already positioned in a piggyback. We pierced the right aortic valve leaflet with 70 watt energy delivered through the Stato wire, which was already connected to the cautery pencil using a hemostat. The Stato wire was snared into the 6 French multipurpose guide. Piggyback catheter was pulled over the Stato wire. The isolation coating was shaved. And a V-shaped bend was made on the Stato wire ahead of the piggyback catheter. The stato wire and the catheter are pushed back into the 8 French multipurpose guide until the V-shaped bend is positioned across the pierced aortic valve leaflet. At the same time, the primary operator is advancing the V-shaped bend across the pierced aortic valve leaflet. Secondary operator is pulling back the snare to externalize the distal end of the stato wire. Both ends of the wire are secured using multiple torquers. The setup at this stage includes an 8 French multipurpose guide through which goes the astato wire and a 6 French multipurpose guide through which the distal end of the astato wire is externalized. Both wire ends are secured using multiple torquers to maintain the tension in the system during the leaflet laceration. Both guides are introduced using the 14th French Edward sheath positioned into the right common femoral artery. Same steps are done to prepare for the left aortic valve leaflet laceration using a 6 French multipurpose guide and an 8 French AL2 guide catheter. While infusing dextrose 5% through both guides, we deliver 70 watts of energy over the Estato wire. Then we pull both guides back as a single unit to lacerate the right aortic valve leaflet. Same steps are repeated for lacerating the left aortic valve leaflet. After removing the guides used to lacerate the right aortic valve leaflet, we positioned a pigtail catheter inside the left ventricle. This was done to minimize the time to valve deployment after the final step of lacerating the left aortic valve leaflet. A stiff wire was placed into the left ventricle using the already positioned pigtail. 
followed by deployment of an S3 23mm valve during rapid pacing. Deployed Sapien 3 valve showed normal function with no paravalvular leak. Left main Korean geography using a 6 French JL35 guide showed obstruction of flow into the left main with a displaced left leaflet. A coronary wire was advanced into the left anterior descending artery to maintain access to the left main. This was followed by selective coronary angiography to the right coronary artery, which showed patent flow into that vessel. Coronary intravascular ultrasound confirmed the impingement of flow into the left main by the displaced lift aortic valve leaflet. A 4.5 by 15 millimeter stent was deployed into the left main, protruding back into the left sinus to push away the displaced aortic valve leaflet. Patency of flow was confirmed by repeat coronary angiography and intravascular ultrasound. Patient was extubated in OR with stable hemodynamics and she was discharged next day to home on aspirin and Plavix. During 18 months of follow-up, she reported improvement in her symptoms with a repeat echo showing an EF of 55% with a mean gradient in the aortic valve of 12 mm mercury and mild mitral regurgitation.